whole room lit it up. And three of us went on our knees and we just cried out for mercy for America. 32 years ago. Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday night. We're so grateful that you're here with us again as we continue to press into the things of the Lord. And of course, this week is our week of prayer and fasting. And God has been doing such a wonderful thing in preparing us as we've been preparing our souls and our hearts for this time, but also to be able to be in a place where we are just really listening carefully. Charlotte's here with me today. And so Charlotte, thank you, dear. Would you just greet the people? Thank you. We're so glad that you are with us. There's something about setting aside time, consecrating ourselves to prayer and fasting that God responds to. His heart is moved by it. It's not like us trying to strive in our own flesh, but there is something about the denial of ourselves, uh, food-wise, time-wise, and just prioritizing the Lord and His presence so we're just so thankful for this week. We're looking forward to our all night of prayer this Friday night, starting at 7.30 here at Lion of Judah and going through the night. And we just are just wanting to see, we're hungry to see the presence of the Lord move and salvation of souls and miracles and God wants to do it. And you know, it is really very special. As you know, this particular day, October 5th, is the final day of the 10 days of prayer. And uh, we're kind of doing double duty here because <laughs> we're doing this in advance so that it could be running at the exact same time as Jonathan Frizz is with us in our bilingual service. And so we'll be participating in that as well. But we know that the Lord will be here and he will minister his life. And I'm going to read a portion of scripture to get us started and to get us focused. And this is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. And we're reading from the New International Version of the Bible today. It says, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we know, we who are alive are always being given over to death, and that's for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. And you know, Charlotte, I had just seen that portion about struck down, but not destroyed, and it really spoke into my spirit, because I've been reading quite a, a number of chapters that over and over again was happening there in the Old Testament, particularly in the time when David was moving into his position of authority in Israel. And we see how that, you know, that phrase, well, go and strike him down. And, and he was, you know, Abishai was running after Joab and he, and he hit him with the, the butt of his spear, went through his body and struck him down. And so whenever we read in the Old Testament about being struck down, it almost inevitably means death. But we know that God is watching over us. And when we feel like we have been smitten or struck down, we are not destroyed. So I really feel like God is wanting us to get a hold of that in a very special way. There are some of you that may be feeling like you have been beaten down, you have been struck down, you've been feeling like you're perplexed, as it says here. It, it, it says that we're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And so God wants us 
in the midst of the dying experience, in the midst of coming into those conflicting kinds of feelings of being, you know, you can, feel, you can really feel overwhelmed by the attack of the, of the evil one. But this is his promise to us, and we need to receive it and respond to it and hold fast to it. So anyway, we're looking forward to believing God, praying into that, and no matter what you're feeling or no matter what your experience is, God has got your back, and he is going to take care of you. Charlotte, I'd like for you to just introduce our wonderful friend who is joining us here, and, uh, and go ahead and, and tell us a little bit about, about our friend Ann Lowe. I'm happy to introduce our guest tonight. Um, she is an amazing woman of God, and we just are so thankful that God sovereignly brought her into our lives to Boston, and you are in for an absolute treat tonight, so please listen carefully. Anne Lowe is the ex an executive member of International Prayer Connect. Uh, and works with prayer leaders, pastors, Christian leaders, literally all over the world. And you have kept an amazing schedule. It makes me dizzy where all you've been in the last few months. But she has a unique anointing, a unique gift to minister joy wherever she goes. Even this afternoon, we were at the State House and we took a little lunch break there, at the, just at the entrance, the Ashburton entrance there, and Anne was exuding joy to a man at, and had the opportunity to sing to him, <laughs> and his heart was moved, his heart was tender. So it is my joy again to introduce Anne Lowe to you. She also is part of the Malaysian Noon Prayer, which is a daily prayer time in Malaysia, and she's going to share the wonderful things that God is doing in Malaysia as well. Yeah, thank you so very much. That I'm so happy that we can be here again, you know, just enjoying the presence of God. Yeah, that visit to the state uh, house. house is like, whoa, God, you know, I get to, <laughs> to be able to go and, and, and just visit, you know, so, something that, yeah, I've never seen even in back home, you know, what an opportunity. Um, yeah, it, it has been good. I really thank God, you know. I can see the footprints of Jesus along my, my journey. This is my second um, a trip here now uh, since I left uh, end of uh, February to go back home. And now I'm back here uh, since July um, the 8th. It's like maybe two more months, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, well, I can. I just stand in awe, and I say, "Thank you, Jesus, you know, for bringing me back again, because He loves us so much." And now maybe I can I can sing my two lines <laughs> to start with it, right? Why not? <laughs> Go ahead. Go for it. I just love it, you know. I I mean, uh, since last year, I've been telling like even Brand and Charlotte. I don't know why I I met so many Christians and they don't sing. Yeah, we were talking about that. <laughs> and I was, I was making mention of the fact that, you know, back in, in the early settling times of these United States, and, and where you can see this is you can go to Sturbridge, Massachusetts, where they reenact mm -hmm. the way that the homes were and the way that the communities were. In fact, they've got a whole community that is there. And, uh, and I remember when we first came, Charlotte, when we came here to Massachusetts, we went out there with uh, our girls when they were little and, and, and we watched them and it was beautiful to see how they sang. And, and they sang harmony parts, and, and it was just awesome, I mean, it, it, what, what they were doing. But this is part of like the Welsh Revival and many other moves of God. Most of the time, people nowadays, they just are listening to their devices, and they are not really oftentimes participants in it. So Anne's going to bless us, and <laughs> Anne, you go ahead and just sing yeah, us your song. you know, I, I think the Lord just wanted to encourage each one of us. So just two lines, okay? I'll start it. It goes, it is from Jeremiah 31, verse 3. It goes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
I have drawn you with my loving kindness. And to everybody who's listening, God is saying to each one of us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with my loving kindness. Ah, well, it's so beautiful to hear you singing and just know that that's really from your heart. And, you know, folks, we've really gotten to love Anne as a, as a person who is a bearer of the anointing, a bearer of the joy of the Lord. And uh, I, I know that God wants to just work through you in this time with our people who are sharing in this experience. And so I'm just going to ask you to open up your heart mm. and just share a little bit of some of the things that God has been doing yeah. throughout the earth. I mean, this woman works uh, you know, with Rick Warren and some of the other leaders that are all across the, the, the earth in ma major, major moves of God, like finishing the task seeking to complete the, the mission's work of sending the gospel into every land, into every nation, so that everybody gets to hear the gospel presented to them in their language, in some way that's expression is relevant to their situation and their circumstance. So just, just share with us how that God put the International Prayer Connect uh, together with finishing the task uh, group and, and being that prayer arm for that ministry and, 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 and just open your heart and share. Well, you know, it's like, okay, you're going to have another treat with Jason Hubbard coming on. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, and he's going to tell you the whole thing because he has agreed to another interview, right? Wonderful. <laughs> to an interview, yeah. Wonderful. So I was like, you know, like, I'm like John the Baptist preparing the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was doing it for Candy Mabal. <laughs> you did? Yeah, you brought candy here yeah. to us, and yeah, that was so awesome. When you were asking me about the prayer covenant, I said, no, 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 she will be the best one. And then for, yes. for this round with IPC being the prayer arm with all these global movements, yes. I think Jason Hubbard will be the best person. Awesome. But i just like to share um, what God, uh, you know, like uh, told me when I was coming last year in five months to 23 cities is like he he was reminding me he's the end you know i did not start a work now i started a work when i was in bible college in christ for the nations 32 years ago and there was this time when i i met um, uh, you know a speaker who came and we love her she's from our um, the, she was with YWAM. She was one of the speakers who share about inner healing, and she would take time. Jean Norman, she would take time, you know, to pray for us, and we love it. And then she she was introducing, say, "Oh, this is my prayer partner," <clears throat> and I was like, "What is a prayer partner?" Because at that time, the Lord was moving my heart uh, to do that, you know, to to want to know more about prayer ministry, being an intercessor. So I met up with her, she took me to Wendy's, we had a meal, and then she said, come, let's go and pray, you know, at the chapel. So we prayed, and then after that she said, do you want to meet the speaker? I said, sure, definitely, you know. And so she brought me to her apartment and she said, Jin, Jin, come and meet Anne, she's not the flaky one. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. You know, there are some who are flaky ones and some who are true ones. Mm -hmm. And so Jin said, I, you know, Anne, uh, would you please pray for me? She took out an anointing oil. And so I just dabbed on her forehead. The whole room lit it up. And three of us went on our knees and we just cried out for mercy for America. Mm -hmm. 32 years ago. Wow. And then after that, there was a knock mm -hmm. at the door. And my teacher who was uh, teaching us prayer intercession mm -hmm. came. Her name is Beth Elves. And she and her a husband run a ministry called Intercessors International. They even go to the prison. They train prisoners to pray for Christian leaders. Mm -hmm. Such a great need, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. to raise up 
prayer shield around our leaders. So important. So that's why when I went back to Malaysia, I remember, you know, we were raising a lot of prayer shield for our pastors and even do it on a national level. And, um, and so when she came around and she said, when, Anne, when are you coming to pray for me? And then I said, okay. So next week I went. And it was a time, you know, I was only know how to pray in tongues. And after that, she said, keep quiet. And there's a word for you from the Lord. And she could even tape it up. And she gave me the cassette, but I don't know where. Oh. But, but I remember these words. He said, you know what? You think God has brought you here, you know, for study, but he's going to bring you to and fro. And it's for the salvation of your people. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, God, what are you saying? You know, it's like, okay. So, so I know that, that being here, I think, you know, I've been coming to and fro, um, connected with IPC in those days when John, Rob, you know, got us around, yeah, I've been like, since 2003, 2002 until now, mm-hmm. like 20, you know, 20 over years now, yeah. Mm-hmm. So the Lord has been faithful to fulfill His Word, mm-hmm. and I believe that He's fulfilling it now. Because just about a week, no, just a few days ago, I was in International House of Prayer. And we were praying for Malaysia. And the, the worship, you know, team had this song, um, Worshipping God. God is in control. He's sitting on His throne. And the Lord reminded me, He said, you know, in 1999, we were at a prayer house praying for Malaysia. And I saw this vision. Jesus was carrying Malaysia. And presenting it to the Father who was sitting on the throne. And he said, spare, Father, spare Malaysia, for I have died for Malaysia. And the Lord said, you, you, where are you now? You know, International House of Prayer is celebrating their 23 years. And this happened 23 years ago. Mm. Is it a coincidence? Wow, wow. Well, you know, I think that there's something marvelous about what God has done over the last 20 some years, Mm -hmm. you know, 23 years or whatever it is, particularly since the founding of the International House of Prayer Mm. and and the different outreaches that have happened as an expression of that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we know that the 10 days of prayer is an amazing thing that uh, Jonathan Frizz has been founding and working to bring to fruition and uh, the Global Family Prayer Room with Jason right. Hubbard yes. and, and others who have been just laboring to bring that about. And of course, it, it happened as a result of the pandemic, I think. You know, yes. that was what kind of was the motivating factor. It got Charlotte and I um, involved in it and, and praying with it in, in that particular season. But it's, it's just powerful what God is doing throughout the earth. And I want for us to begin to just really seek the Lord. Mm. And as we go into this first section of prayer, Mm. I am going to believe that God is going to just give real specific instructions on how to be able to pray. We're believing that God has your answer Mm. to the prayer needs that you have right in this moment they're going to unfold for you. Mm. God does not want you to just live lingering, hoping, wishing for, desiring, but never attaining that sense of confidence that God, who hears your prayers, Mm. will bring you the answers that he wants to loosen release. Mm. I do remember hearing this little statement that God has an answer to prayer, and it's yes, no, or wait, you know. And a lot of us feel like, well, we've done a lot of waiting, you know. And uh, it's time Mm -hmm. in the earth for the loosing and the releasing Mm -hmm. of the answers to prayer to begin Mm -hmm. to unfold. So, Charlotte, I'm going to just ask if you would begin our time of Mm -hmm. prayer. And I know that as you do, God's going to inspire you show you, give you revelation. And those of you that are praying with us, this is not just time to 
kind of wait to hear something for you, God's going to use you and you may be instructed to call somebody else and yeah. say, this is a word for you or this is what the Lord is giving. And, and because we know that God is on the move. This week, as we are interceding and we are praying, we are sensitizing our hearts. We are literally being depleted after the natural man so that we can be fortified and filled up mm. in the spirit man. And so that's from the posture of that is what we are initiating these prayers for. Charlotte, would you begin our time? Thank you, dear. Lord, we thank you today from the depths of our heart for the household of faith that is worldwide. Mm. Father, yes. we are your living temple. We are the living stones, Lord. You are the foundation. And we give you praise, Lord, that over these last couple of years, we have been connected, God, mm. with your people around yes. the earth who are praying, God. It's been such an inspiration, Father. We thank you, God, for International Prayer Connect and Jason Amen. Hubbard, God. We thank you for, Lord, the Global Family, co-founded by Jason Hubbard and by Jonathan Fritz. Amen. Father, where we can tune in anytime, 24-7, God, yes. and we can join with brothers and sisters around the world who are praying, who are crying out oh. to you, Lord. And we thank Amen. you, God, that you are doing a work, Lord. It's a worldwide Amen. movement it of prayer, is. God. And we just give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, you said when you were here, my house will be called a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. And Father, we thank you so much that you are making this a reality, God. We pray that even during this week of prayer at Lion of Judah, God, that you would just minister life, God, to your people and cause us, Lord, to believe earnestly that you hear yes. and you answer our prayers. You do not turn a deaf ear, God, mm. and that, Lord, we have the same ministry that you have, Jesus, at the right hand of the Father. This is your ministry, the yes. ministry of intercession. Yes. And Lord, we pray tonight as Jonathan Frizz is here in our bilingual service, mm. God, even that's running concurrently with this program, yes. God. Yes. We ask God for a visitation of your yes. spirit on this day of atonement in the Jewish calendar, yes. Lord. Yes, Lord. The day that we remember, God, your sacrifice for us, God. Lord, the freedom from our sins, Lord, the intimate relationship that we enjoy with you, God. We are so incredibly grateful. Mm -hmm. We thank you for Anne, God, who is with us on this yes, program God. and the inspiration, God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the lessons yes. you've taught her over these 40 years of working with leaders from all countries, Lord, the love that she has, the, the acceptance, Lord, mm -hmm. The way, God, that she just flows in your spirit, God, we thank you for this. And we pray, God, for her that you will strengthen her and you will bless her, God, as she continues to travel throughout America in these next couple of months, Lord, before going back to Malaysia. We just thank you, God, for all, for all that you are doing in Jesus' name. I want to declare these verses from Psalm 22, uh, verses 22 to, 20, to 31. I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will praise you. Hallelujah. You who fear the Lord, praise him. Hallelujah. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. Mm. May your hearts mm. live forever. Yeah. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations 
will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. Yes. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn. Wow, he has done it. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for this verses that God look to and fro, you know, to show himself strong to those who are faithful. So thank you, Lord. Just pray. Thank Man, you. thank you, Father. Wow, Lord, you are so amazing. We will come back to praise you. We will come back to honor you. We will come back to revere you. You sitting on your throne. Dominion belongs to you, God. You are still powerful. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change, Father. You will show yourself strong. Father, you will hear our cries and answer them. Father, look down upon us now, even now. Run down the heavens. Lord, you will work miracles for those who wait on you. Yes. On behalf of those who wait, who call upon you, Father, you are answering prayers in such an unprecedented way, so oh God. You are doing it because, Lord, you are faithful. You mm -hmm. are faithful. Your name is faithful and true, Father. You are covenant-keeping God. You are so faithful. Come, Father, for those who need healing, may you heal them. Those who need a touch, oh God. Yes. Come. Yes. Release, oh God, your love that yes. is so unfailing. Those who need hope, Father. Those who need to just hear you. Mm -hmm. Affirming, oh God, your love for them. Yes. You're a good, good Father. We dismantle every lie of the enemy, every accusing voices that we have been hearing all these years we say no more no more, no more in jesus mighty no more. name and we will open our mouth to sing your praises god yes god we declare the praises of you we declare yes. god father your your everlasting love we will sing father and be set free be totally oh god be set free because this is what you want father you have come to give us life and life more abundant and enjoy it here on earth, Lord. Not until we when we go home mm -hmm, to visit mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. you know, go home to you. But now, Lord, now, Father, oh, come, Holy Spirit. Come in your gentle way. Come in your powerful way. Release, oh God, such a joy, a joy that, yes, that, that is so <clears throat> powerful, Lord. Let the joy of yours come, Father, and yes, and just shut down everything. Whoa. Amen. Yes. Amen. God, and, and break down every stronghold in our lives in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. Yes, the joy of the Lord be released, Lord. The voice of you, God. You're a powerful one in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Heal, Lord. Holy Spirit. No more accusing voices that yes. we've been hearing. No more. No more. No more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No more in the name of Jesus. Yes. But just that voice of that Father. Yes. Oh, wow. Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Yes. Come home to the Father. Come home. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. You know, even as you were just saying Hallelujah. that, come home, come home. I I can't help it. It, it, it brings back an old, old hymn, a, a hymn of invitation. Come home, 
Come home, ye who are weary. Come home. Come home. Come Softly home. and tenderly. tenderly. Jesus is calling. Yes, God. Calling, O oh, sinner. Come, come home. home. Come home. We're all sinners. Mm. We, there's, there's nobody who is nobody who's perfect except Jesus. Yes. And he's just waiting for us <coughs> to come. And, and we want to come. Mm. You know, I, I, I know that there are hard times that are on the horizon. There are. We are going to go through hard things, hard times. Yes. All you have to do is read the book of Revelation and you yes. know that that's going to happen. And I know that there's all kinds of different ideal understandings of, of, of doctrinal positions on, on pre-trib and post-trib and mid-trib rapture and, and that. It doesn't really matter. All we know is that God is going to save his people. God yeah. is going to preserve us in this generation to be able to walk through the hard times. And when we read this portion that's taken from the Second Corinthians, it says, yeah. We are hard pressed on every side, mm. but not crushed. Mm. Amen. I know that there are some of you that just feel absolutely pummeled. There yes. are some of you that feel like mm. all of the weight of the world is upon your shoulders and you feel like, I don't know if I can make it through another night. You can. Yes. Because the strength of God is there for you. Yes. Thank Perplexed, you but not in despair. Persecuted but mm -hmm. not abandoned, struck down, but yes. not destroyed. Hallelujah. You may feel like yes. you're being just pummeled by the enemy, but I'm telling you what, God is going to come underneath you and he's going to put that kind of vim and vigor and Hallelujah. strength and yes. courage into your heart. I know that God wants a courageous people. That's right. He That's wants right. men and women That's who right. will be able to have authority Amen. in this hour. And it, and it can only come as a gift from God because it doesn't come from us ourselves. Amen. We know that we in and of ourselves, we, we are overwhelmed when we look at the circumstances. We're overwhelmed because that's just what the circumstances paint as the picture. You look at all the things about the prices and you look at all the things about the stock market. You look at all of the things about the 401ks or other retirement packages that people may have worked all of their lives for and watching it go down, down, down. I'll tell you what, God is there for you. God is there for me. God will be there for your portion no matter what. Do not be afraid. Little ones, do not be afraid. God is able to meet your need. Amen. He is a, able to meet your need this very hour, this very day. Allow him mm -hmm. to come and allow him to work in you mm -hmm. because the way he's working in you is always carrying around in our body the Amen. death of Jesus. Yes. You know, Jesus died so that we wouldn't have to die. Amen. But Jesus calls us into being crucified daily. Yep. Now that is a paradox. You can't hardly get your head around it. But it is the truth. We're yes. being called into his death so that the life, the resurrection mm -hmm. life Amen. of Jesus, that thing that gives us is the ability to engage even in the midst of the turmoil. You look at David as a young boy. He got that anointing on him yes. when he heard that, that Goliath stand there and mock the armies mm. of God, mock the name of God. Yes. And, and something of the spirit of the living God just rose up in him. That's what he's doing in you. That's what he's doing in me. That's what his intentions are for us so that we can have that authority. And so I'm going to pray just kind of in wrapping this prayer, this first prayer time together. Father, I ask right now that the anointing that breaks the yoke, God, that that anointing that causes all of the things that seem to make us feel overwhelmed and wearied and burdened down. God, just break it off. 
Yes. In Jesus' name, just break it off, God, so that we can arise. You want us to be able to arise in your strength and in your power, Lord. We're not going to arise in the, in the arm of the, of the flesh. We do not trust the arm of the flesh. We know what comes as a result of doing things in the arm of our humanity, in the arm of our own strength. We become weakened, we become discouraged, we become despondent, Lord. But when you empower us and when we are moving in your strength, God, that is when the victory comes. And it's that kind of victory that we want. It's that kind of victory that you want for your Amen. people. And Lord, we just praise you that right now you are arising and you are shining and your light is coming to us. So Father, we thank you for that in this moment as we pray. In Jesus name. And you know what? I'm going to ask Charlotte. I'm going to just ask you just to take and just kind of close this segment in prayer because I'm telling you there is an authority that you are yes. called to release. That's right. You have been tested sorely. And because you have been tested sorely, the anointing <laughs> is upon you to be able to speak release. And in Jesus name, I'm just believing that God is going to rest on you and you are going to declare the authority of God for each one of our lives. Back in July, the Lord really began dealing with my heart from Psalm 149, mm. verse 6. And it says, it talks about two amazing weapons that God has given us. Because I personally have to share, I was feeling very low. And as I took this verse, and I, I meditated on it a lot through the summer, and it says, let the high praises of God be in our mouths. And Anne, you've alluded to the singing, to the song, the songs of deliverance yes. that God is literally singing over us and wants us to sing, regardless of our circumstances that we find ourselves in. And it says this, let the high praises of God be in their mouths, and the double-edged sword in their hand. And that is the word of God, which Ephesians says is that two-edged sword. Mm. It pierces. It pierces our own hearts first as it has pierced mine. And then between the, even the joints and the marrow, yes. it's just an amazing cleansing agent, mm. the word yes. of God, and it challenges our lives. But we must mm. pay attention to what God is speaking through his word as well. And then the Lord led me to that story about Jehoshaphat and the victory in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, where Jehoshaphat mm -hmm. prayed before the whole nation of Judah mm -hmm. and said, God, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. <laughs> our eyes are on you. And he appointed the singers to head into the battle first. Yep. <laughs> and you know the song they sang? They say, praise the Lord because his love endures forever. And you know, it's not hard to praise when we understand how deeply we are loved by the Lord. Our hearts just respond to him. So Lord, I do pray. I do pray, Lord, that our hearts would respond to your love. And God, that your song would well up in us and the praises, the high praises of God will be in our mouths that your love endures forever. You love us, Lord, with an unfailing love. Yes. Yes. No matter what we are going through, Lord, it does not disqualify us from your love. And Lord, even if it feels, Lord, and some people are saying, I feel so abandoned by God. I don't know where he is. I don't feel loved by him. He is the lover of your soul. Amen. He is the one That's right. whose love is unfailing. Yes. He is faithful God, and he will bring us through. Mm -hmm. Just keep our eyes on him. Though we don't know what to do, Lord, our eyes are on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen. You know, that is the, the heart of God is poured out. <laughs> the heart of God is poured out mm. for mankind. We, 
we kind of get to thinking about that in the grand sense, mm. in the sense of the whole world. For God so loved the whole world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. And we know that Jesus died for all mankind. But what's most important for us to really grapple with mm. is he died for you. For me. He died for me. Mm -hmm. He died for us. Mm -hmm. That we would be able to be brought into fellowship with him. The whole world needs to know about this Jesus. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. And I, I, I would like for us in this next section just to really open up some of the things that Anne has been kind of leading the way in with many of these others in executive actions in pulling people together to be able to be strategic in their praying. And it's very important that we are praying, but it's wonderful to see that our prayers are not just singular. Mm -hmm. Our prayers are not just in the closet, although it is imperative that we pray mm -hmm. in, in the closet by ourselves yeah. and we are sustaining. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not talking about just only praying in public forums, but it's, it's imperative that we have yeah. a personal relationship with God and a personal walk with Him. But I think one of the things that I'd love for you to just open up for us, Anne, mm -hmm. is how that God over these last 20, 30 years has really begun to be able to bring a prayer movement mm -hmm. from small localized expressions into something that is really truly global. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes how to how to get our heads and our hearts around a, a global prayer movement so that it's not just so big and so vast that it seems daunting, but yeah. that we can know that we as individuals are a part of it. Yeah. So just share. Well, I, I believe, you know, it's like, he's asking us to be relentless, <laughs> not to give up, yeah. And so that is really, really important. Sometimes we want quick answers and, you know, God is working in our hearts, you know, cleaning up us Amen. up. <laughs> Amen. And like talking about if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear. And of course we know God has yes. forgiven us. But I had this, this thing about, you know, uh, one day I was praying, I was preparing myself uh, for, to lead worship. And then I was praying, and then God said, keep quiet. I want to talk to you. I was like, okay, God, what is that? And he said, yeah. your heart is like a garden. But there are weeds there. I like to pull it up, out. And I was like, okay. So I went to church and led worship. But six months down the road, um, he had me, you know, uh, gone through with Dr. Bradley Stewart about uh, sin, transgression, iniquity. Went through two, two uh, sessions of his. Sin is like you cut, you know, you bandage it, you got healed. Transgression, I walked down the road at the end of it. No trespassing. Oh, God, you know, sorry. But the next day, sin is a shortcut. You know, save time. I do it again because nobody is looking at it. Mm. But if I don't stop, it becomes iniquity. It affects my character. Yes. And so when I was going through all that, I was like, oh, wow. You know, stubbornness, lust, and covetousness, and all that, you know. And then, then, then uh, we had to do something for the speaker, and I... My, my, my pastor wasn't really keen, you know, say, oh, that's enough uh, offering that we will collect. Then I went to my treasurer. I said, can you please help? You know, maybe uh, the pastor will hear you. <laughs> so then at, at the night after the session, I saw the treasurer taking the offering back and I prayed for the offering because we were going to collect the offering for the speaker. Then later when I came down, and I overheard uh, the treasurer say sorry to the pastor. <laughs> then I was like, oh, I'm in hot soup. <laughs> oh, wow. Then I pretend not to want to know that I'm in hot soup. I went and asked my pastor, do you want to go for dinner? 
He said, no. <laughs> he was black. <laughs> and I was like, oh, what's happening? Then, then, then we had no choice. We went to the speaker, to the dinner. And I came out from, my, from the restaurant and I called my pastor. I said, pastor, I'm so sorry, you know. I, you told me not to collect offering and then we went. And then the first word that came up from his mouth was, you stubborn girl, you only want to do what you like, and back down the phone. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh. But half of me was happy because he showed me my iniquity, you know, like mm -hmm. stubbornness was an iniquity, was that weed, remember? That weed that needed to be plucked out from my heart. Mm. So I called him again, I said, Pastor, <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. I didn't obey you, you know. But you, but the Lord used you to show me my iniquity. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. This is not the right time. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> so I was telling everybody, come on, let's eat and go home. I want to cry. So I called two of my two of my prayer partners. I please, I say, pray for me. You know, my ministry is like gone. This is the most terrible time of my. So I went home. I went through Psalm 51. You know, pray, cry. You know, my eyes were like swollen the whole night, the whole. And then I went through Psalm 32. You know, and then the Lord showed to me is like, yeah, you know. Yes, we know our sin, transgression, iniquities are being cleansed, being what? But when we repent, you know, there is a, such a thing as repentance, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I, because mm -hmm. I remember my dad was always saying, you know, you're like your mother, you know, you always you are like your mother. I was like, really? <laughs> what do I? <laughs> you know, maybe being stubborn, being have our own way. So every time I share this testimony, everybody will say, we are stubborn. I don't know whether Charlotte will tell you how you tell Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte, you are like that. <gasps> or Brent, you are like that. You yeah. never listen, you know. So, yeah, we struggle with that. And, and you know, iniquity is like it, it affects our character. So we pray and we pray and pray. It doesn't reach the target because we're crooked. There's a crookedness that's oh, that yeah, in us, you know. Yeah. So I learned a lesson. I thought... I learned a lesson. Few few years down the road, when my pastor said, "Oh, you make sure you do this," I never did. I say yes, but I never <laughs> did. Can you imagine? Mm. And it affected not only me, but it affected so many people. Mm -hmm. So, Brand and Charlotte, I I want to tell you know, get hold of Dr. Bradley, teaching mm -hmm. on sin, transgression, and iniquity. We want to be cleansed. Amen. We don't want our character, you know, to be so, yeah. Because when I shared this, I remember there was somebody who said that he saw a motorbike and the motorbike was running. He just took the motorbike, went home. There are second nature sins that we can't, blind spots that we can't even see yes, ourselves. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, when, when you're sharing about that, it's, it, it's, very, it's very true because I, I don't even think we, if left undone, yeah. we sin. That's right. It is, you know, it is our nature. I mean, if we, if we just do what is natural to us, mm -hmm. we will sin. We will make mistakes. We will cause problems. So I, I'm, I'm just believing that, you know, because you're bringing this up, I, I just feel like the Lord is wanting to yeah. highlight something in, yeah. in somebody's yeah. heart, in somebody's life. I, I know you, you you don't even know this is the problem with with the yeah. process of sin you know yeah. sin going to transgression to iniquity is is that your heart becomes calloused That's right. and yeah. your eyes become blind to the mm -hmm. to to what happens in the midst of that that set of circumstances and before you know it, you can't even see. And this is why Jesus, when he said about the people who will say, some will say, well, we cast out devils in your name. 
you know, we, we did mighty acts in your, day, your name. And, and he says, you never knew me because didn't take time to know him. Didn't get time to, to really understand God's ways. And he mentioned workers of iniquity. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. It's frightening, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, too, there's an insidious pride that really blinds us mm. um, many times. We were talking about this earlier, in fact, Anne and Brandt, mm. uh, in reference to a quote from an older man of God, Cal Campbell McAlpine, and I heard it actually right. said by Lauren Cunningham, right. the founder of YWAM, and the quote was that relinquishing our rights mm -hmm. while maintaining our responsibility mm -hmm. equals relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, kick and scream about relinqu relinquishing our rights. We, we somehow, this insidious pride comes that we somehow know better mm. and we can spiritualize it <laughs> just yeah. like, and I'm sure you could spiritualize, well, we need to give a better offering to the speaker, you know, mm. and probably that was true. Probably that was true. But it's when we enter into this thing of, of not relinquishing our rights mm. and really coming in a spirit of humility before yeah. God and man, not just God, right. but God and man, and allowing God to work His will and His purposes. He has ways of doing things that I can never do. Mm -hmm. And so I think this all kind of ties together. It does. It really does. I, I feel like the Lord is superintending this, this interaction around this prayer table here this, this very night. And I'm going to just ask that, that we, again, really begin to pray. And Anne, I'm going to ask you to begin our time of prayer because yeah. I really feel like God's done something in you and yes. he's, he's shown you the willful, <laughs> sinful way. And, and people know around here at Lion of Judah enough about my story to know that I came through the ringer. You know, that God actually yeah. just really had to... He had to devastate my, my, right. my existence to be able to bring me to my senses mm. and ultimately bring me to a place where I said, God, I want you yeah. no matter what. That's right. But just, just share a little bit more and then, and then just lead us in prayer. And then Charlotte, if you'll... Yeah, so, so when I knew I was coming back, <clears throat> I, I had five weeks in, in Sydney, in Australia, so I said, God, you know, Psalm 19, yeah, from verses 7 to 14 were well, like, I knew, like, I don't want to take God for granted, you know, having presumptuous sins, that thinking right. that He works this way, He will always work. So yeah. I went on, on like a 21-day brain detox. <laughs> wow. And I said, God, you got to deal with me. You know, I'm going to just commit myself 21 days, daily coming before Him, but the word that kept on coming was relinquishing. <clears throat> so I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to relinquish, you know, the right to my future, whatever you want to do, you know, just do it. And, and so as I do that, then I was like, wow, you know, the, the word of the Lord, the statutes, the command, you know, all that cleansing, enduring, you know, shines upon us, radiates upon us, give us that joy. And then it comes to the, you know, like his word is, is even sweeter than honey, better than the gold. And then um, cleanse me, you know, if there's any hidden errors or presumptuous sins. Some, I think some version was willful. Yes. Right? Yes, willful sin. And then at the end of it, you know, is it let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you. Right? So... Mm -hmm. Not just being an intercessor or a prayer warrior. I mean, as a, as a son and daughter of God, you know, as one who follows Him, He wants integrity. He wants godliness. Mm -hmm. These are our bodyguards. I, I, you know, I always feel that God wants to do such a deep, deep work in us so that the, the enemy has not, cannot find anything in us. Amen. Right? Amen. It's like, wow, God, it can be done because if we follow Jesus, we just want, you know, to do that and so be kept, you know, um, very, very close to Him. This is like that song. Whom have I in heaven but you? There's nothing on earth I desire besides you. 
my heart and my flesh many times they fail but there is one truth that always will prevail god is the strength of my heart god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever forever you know let's desire god because he's the only one that can keep us safe. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And not, you know, I mean, even if you fall down, the righteous shall fall what? Get up! <laughs> yeah, if you fall down seven times, get you up. get up. You know? <laughs> Amen. You Amen. Don't, you don't stand there. Yeah, cry. No, you get up. <laughs> just pray. Pray that into our hearts. Father, we just come before you. And, and if we have been listening to our friends or our spouses or our children who say, you know, you never listen or you always want to do your way, today, God, we come to you and say, please help us, Lord, to listen, to hear what people are saying about us, Father, in a way that if we have been wanting our own way, change us in any way you want, God. Yes, Truly, this is our prayer. Today, be Lord of our life in new ways. Change us in any way you want. God, we cannot stay the same. We want to go, grow, and be transformed daily. Forgive us, oh God, when we are so willful, when we are so stubborn, oh God. when we are so arrogant. Yes. And nobody can speak into our life when we reach a level. But we say, forgive us, especially our own family. Lord, those who are close to us, they are the ones who know us, God. Jesus. Jesus. So we pray for such a reconciliation and healing that we are able to speak to one another in, you know, truthfully in love, Father. Help us, help us, Lord, today. Thank you, Father, for being our help. That you want, Lord, to forgive us when we ask you for forgiveness. And we turn, repentance, turn around, Father. Yes, you have given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help us. So thank you for being our guide. In Jesus' name. Lord, I think of that scripture, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time you will be exalted. Lord, we want the exaltation. And we rush ahead, God, and we try so many ways, God, to grasp for ourselves. But you have told us to humble ourselves under your mighty hand. Father, we pray that we will, again, just check our own hearts, God. Allow your spirit, as David prayed, search me, O God, know my heart. See if there's some wicked way in me and lead me in the path everlasting. Lord, we, we repent of trying to choose our own ways instead of being in your paths, Lord, your everlasting paths that lead to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, God. Thank you, Lord, that you are doing a deep work in your people, Lord. We thank you that you love us enough not to leave us as we are, Amen. but to transform us, God, from glory to glory. You are changing us. And may we welcome this process of change, Lord, because you are a loving God who is intent, Lord, on transforming us to become more like you yes. until we see you in that day, Lord, face to face, and we behold your beauty. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are working. You always are working. Lord, I love that about you. You never stop working. Yes, you take that sabbatical rest, but you never <laughs> stop working. You're continually pruning. You're continually bringing us into more and more of the image of Christ. 
Lord, like that beautiful gardener who who handles those tools that are sharp and prickly and those tools that can cut and, and, and seem to be harsh. Yeah. But the purpose of them is to be able to be beautiful. The purpose of them is to be a well-watered garden. Amen. Something bearing fruit, Lord, yes. something offering back to you yes, all of the reasons for our existence, yes, Lord. Lord. They're in you. Our actual meaning is all tied up with you. Mm. And Father, I just thank you that you and us working these things out through life, mm. through the back and forth, the ups and downs, the in and outs, the the failures and the victories, God. This is how you work in accordance with your people. And so, Father, we praise you that even in this hour, even in this day, God is working in each of us. He's working in you. Do not think that things are just kind of marching on as they always have been. God is doing these things for your perfecting. Believe. I mean, this is a hard thing to get your head around when Jesus said, be therefore perfect even as your Father which was in heaven is yeah. perfect. I, I have to say I've never seen the perfect person, but I know that that's the call Amen. is to be like him, yes. to have his glory just that's be right. on us all the time. Mm. And so, Father, we just praise you, Lord, that this is your desire. It's not our conjuring. Yes. It's it's not even just, just a, a fanciful reading of the Word of God. It's very clear. You you want to draw us into that image of Christ, Amen, that identity with you. And so, Father, we enter into it. Yes, Lord, we need more courage. And yes, Lord, we don't want to be timid about it. But God, somehow you are going to infuse us yes. with the capacity for much, much more than we're living in. And so that the reviving of your church, yes. the outpouring God, of your faith in we frail human beings, these jars of clay. Lord, we are going to be manifesting your glory in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Charlotte, Anne, I don't know. Do you have anything else that you feel to share? I, I think, Anne, something's stirring yeah. in you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when Jesus asks uh, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. I'm but you know, just say, yeah, I love you. And then say, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. Yes. I think when we declare our love to Jesus, we indeed, we need that feeding, you know. Out of that being fed by God, we need to feed. Yes. And so I, I went through a, a spiritual retreat just recently. And one of the things, like, like I, I met this 79-year-old, this Korean lady. I was, I just met, I mean, I met her in, in, in Indonesia. Then I came and stayed with her. And then she said, um, beside praying, can you give me Bible study? <laughs> I was like, okay. I used to love that, you know, one-to-one. Mm -hmm. -one. And, and when I did that, it was like, wow, God, no wonder. It's like, this is what you want, you know. Being fed by Him, and then we are able to feed others who are younger, you know, in the faith. And when we do that, it becomes so refreshing and becomes so reviving, <laughs> like Amen. you say, because you're, you're teaching the Word of God and you, you know. So I, I believe that is one. And then the other second thing, we must open our mouth to share the gospel in our morning walks, whatever. Please do not keep your mouth <laughs> and another thing is sing and record your songs and send it out I have one friend who's deaf from, from birth so just recently in, in July I made her record her own song which is from Psalm 103 verses 1 to wow. 5 wow. and then she heard it again for the first time in 60 years she never heard her, her voice singing when she heard that, she was so amazed. 
So I please, please, Brent, yes. get everybody to feed the lamb, do Bible study once a week. You want to do it, grandchildren or children or whoever. Second, sing and record your song. Third, go and share the gospel to everybody. Amen. 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 Well, I tell you what, <laughs> this lady has got more boldness than than any ten of us. I, I, I'm telling you, it just it's just inner. It's such a beautiful thing, and that's the way it should be. That is how it should be. That we have that boldness of Christ. That we, like like Paul said, you know, he he had to share. He had to share the gospel. He he was constrained to tell and proclaim and declare the good news. We give you that as a command in Jesus' name. Go and share the good news of Jesus everywhere with everyone you meet. Amen.